In this video, you're going to be creating a real-time application using Node.js, Express, Socket.io, and on your front end, you're going to be using Next.js and Tailwind. This is what it's going to look like. We're going to have three different clients here. So whenever a user signs up, let's call this guy Bobby, we can see that the button color is going to change. You can press on it, or you can also press on enter, and all the other guys are going to get notified that Bobby has joined, and we can see that it's going to move the user down because we have a responsive container here that's going to move the conversation down every time a user types in something. So let's say Bobby says hello to greet everybody. And we're going to go here. We can see that it's going to scroll down for us. And this goes for every single other user. And we can also upload images here. And every user is going to get their own little icon here with their name. And another cool feature that this chat application is going to have is this nice typing animation. So if this guy starts typing hey or anything else and we go down here, we can see this nice cool typing animation for every single user. And when he sends it, we can see his message and the typing animation disappears. And I'm going to upload a quick image here. So I'm going to do this nice little send icon and if we go to the other users we're going to be able to see it just like any other image and we can see that different images are going to have different sizes and you can still save them so if you right click and press on save image as you can still save these images and i still managed to forget to show you how responsive the website is so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to open the developer console this is going to be what it's going to look like on mobile so we can send text just like normal and it's going to scroll down for us we can upload images the same way as you would on a desktop. So here's going to be the image. So before we get started, make sure you like this video, subscribe to don't miss upcoming content like this. Comment down below if you actually want to see more videos like this. And if you do, then please leave a suggestion for something that you'd like to build. But now let's get started. As always, go to your desktop, right click anywhere and press on open in terminal. This is going to open CMD. And in here we're going to write mkdir. We're going to call the folder real time chat app let's say d to this folder and we're going to write code period which is going to open it in vs code as we can see over here and here we're going to create two folders the first one is going to be the client and then we're also going to create the server and here we're going to go to view and open it in terminal we're going to create two powershells one is going to be for the client and then the second one is going to be for the server I'm going to go back to the client and here we have to cd to the client and we're going to initialize our next.js so npx create next app at latest and it's going to be inside of this folder and in here we're going to say no yes yes no to source directory yes to app router and no to import alias so it's going to start creating the next.js app now we're going to go to the server PowerShell and write CD server. And in here we're going to write npm init y, which is going to create a package.json file. Let's create a server.js file also. And we're going to install a few dependencies. So npm install. The first one is going to be express. Second one is going to be nodemon. And then we're going to be using socket.io. So let's install that. I'm going to go over what socket.io is and what it does later on. So after we initialize everything, so we have our server folder complete over here. Now we can go back to the client and we're going to install the socket.io client dependency. So npm i socket.io and this is going to be for the client. So let's install everything. And once that's done, we're going to see our client folder have all of our Next.js and the server folder have our Node.js with Express. The next thing I want you to do is go to the description down below and open this Google Drive, which is going to have two folders. One is going to be an assets folder with all of the images. And then the second one is going to be a components folder. And I want you to go ahead and download this and copy and paste it inside of our client folder over here. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the components folder. I'm going to paste it inside of the clients folder. So we're going to see this components folder have a few React files with a div and some text. And so I created this so that you don't have to waste time on creating them. And then the next one is going to be the assets. So I'm going to go ahead and paste them in here too. And we can see they're going to be basic SVG files. And there's going to be one more thing I want you to do, and that's going to be to go to the GitHub repository, find the globals.css file, and copy and paste it in here. We can see it's only going to be 56 lines, so it's nothing special. And let's go to the page.js and remove all of this boilerplate code. So 
go down into here and remove all of that. I'm going to remove this image import and now we can start with our backend. And let's start by creating our server in the server folder. Before we create our server, I want to go over what Socket.io is and what it's going to help us doing. So over here, it says that it's a library that enables low latency bidirectional and event-based communication between a client and a server. So we're going to be able to send different messages between our client and server, and it's going to make it a lot easier than using stuff like forms. You're going to see how it works soon enough. So if we just search it up on Chrome, Socket, I forgot about the IO part, so Socket IO, we're going to see a simpler explanation. So over here, it says that it's a library for real-time web applications, which is exactly what we're going to be doing. It enables real-time bidirectional communication between web clients and servers. And now that you know the basics of Socket IO, you're going to see how it works in just a second. Again, we're going to have to start by creating our express server. So we're going to start by writing const express and we're going to require that from express. Then we're going to get our app from the express function. And we do have to create a new variable, which we haven't created in the Node.js crash course. This one's going to be called HTTP and it's going to be coming from HTTP. And then we have to make another one, which is going to be called server. And we're going to be using this HTTP variable and we're going to create a server from the app. I'm going to fix this. And now we're going to get a server from the socket.io. So that would be from require socket.io. And now we're going to be making a variable for that. So IO is going to be new server. And I'm going to go over all of this in just a second. So here we're going to be getting a server. And then there's going to be a course with the origin being, I'm just going to set this to everything. And like I said before, we're going to go over all of this in just a second. And then, then down here, we can listen on whatever port we want to. So we're going to listen on port 3001, just because our next JS is running on port 3000 here. Let's just console log server is running on port 3001. And when we start this server and then also our Next.js, we're going to be going to localhost 3000 because our Next.js is going to be connecting to this express server with Socket.io. And now that we have our server listening on port 3000, we can use our IO variables. So if we write io.on connection, we're going to get a socket. And then here we can console log user is connected. And then let's also add the user. So I'm just going to copy this user is connected and then we can also write the id of the user so with id socket.id so every time the user connects to the server we're going to be getting this console log now there's one more thing we have to do and it's going to our page.js we have to import io over here so io and it's going to be coming from socket.io dash client and in here we're going to create a variable called socket where we're going to be sending our messages and socket is going to be a connection to IO and that's going to be coming from HTTP localhost 3001. Make sure that you change this to 3001 or it's not going to work. Now I'm going to go to the terminal. I'm going to run npm dev. This is going to start the client. Same goes for the server and we're going to run npm run dev and we can see that it's not going to work. So let's go to the package.json, change this to dev and this command is going to run node mod server.js. Let's run this again, and now it's going to work. So we can see that the server is running on port 3000. If we go to the client and go to this page over here, it's going to take some time, but it's going to start our Next.js app. And now if we go back to the server, we can see that we're going to get a user connected with an ID of, and we're going to get a large string. So if we open another page, we can see that we're going to get a different connection because that's going to be a different tab. And we're going to be able to send messages inside of our server.js here by using our socket right here. And I'm going to be going over the server.js file. So if you're not interested, you can go ahead and skip. So at the very top, we're going to be requiring Express and HTTP. And Express is going to be a web application framework from Node.js, which is going to allow us to handle HTTP requests and responses. Then the HTTP is going to be a built-in Node.js module for creating HTTP servers. Then we're going to create an Express application over here by creating a variable called app. And we're going to be running this Express function. Then we're going to create an HTTP 
HTTP server, which is going to handle incoming HTTP requests. Over here, we're going to import and configure our socket.io. And this line right here is going to be a class from the socket.io package, which is going to be used to create a new socket.io server. And this IO is going to be an instance of the socket.io server, which we set to be configured to have cross origin, which is going to allow us to connect to the server from any URL. Then over here, we're going to handle the IO connection and you're going to see how we can send messages from our server to the page.js and the other way around. And then here we're going to be listening on port 3000, which is going to start the server. And it's also going to console log that our server is running on port 3000. So hopefully now you understand how our server.js file is going to be working. Open the page.js file and make sure that you add use client or else you're going to get an error later on. I did minimize this window so that we don't have to go back and forth, but let's go ahead and import use effect from react then we're going to use it here so use effect and once this page.js file loads in we're going to be sending a message to our server.js by writing socket.emit and we can say client ready and we can also pass in a message so let's just say hello from client then if we go to our server over here we can write socket.on client ready we're going to get the data and then in the callback function, we can console log the data. So let's fix this and write data. Now, if we go back in here, and let's comment reload and line. go to the server. We can see what, that we're going to get our hello from client and try again. So we're going to get hellos from client. But now let's go back to our page.js and let's create a button. I'm just going to write click me and on click. We're going to emit a different message. So socket.emit btn clicked. And this time, let's not pass in anything. So btn clicked. I'm going to comment this one out. So server.js in here on btn clicked. We're not going to get data. So let's just remove this and let's just console log clicked. So now if we click the button, we're going to get clicked from our server. Another thing we can do is actually emit a message from our server so socket.emit and write to smt i'm not going to pass anything else but if you go to the page.js file and write socket.on and here we have do something we're going to run a callback function and here let's just console log clicked from our client right here so if we go to inspect go to console press on the button we're going to get clicked here and also we're not going to get in the server anymore but hopefully get the point and i do have another client open here so if we click it a few times here we can see that we're not going to get this console log in this client so if we do want to get the console log on this client we can change this to io which is going to emit this to all of our clients so if we reload both of them and press on the button here a few times we're going to get the console log also in this client. So this is how we can send messages from our server and the client. But now let's actually start creating our application. So go to the server, remove any code that you're not going to need. Same goes for the page.js. And let's start by importing a few things. So we're going to need use state and then also use ref. Then we're going to be importing our chat inputs and then also the signup page from the components and we can use at which is going to make it simpler so at components then in here let's render all of them so we're going to start with the chat then we're going to have our inputs and then we're going to have our sign up so if we go back in here we're going to have our chat inputs and sign up and the way that it's going to work is we're going to have a use ref for user so let's go ahead and create it const user which is going to be use ref and we're going to set that to null and here we're going to write if user doesn't exist then we're going to show the center page else we're going to have our chat and inputs and let's let's go ahead and do it right here we're going to start by writing if user dot current then we're going to render the chat and inputs else it's going to be the sign up and here since we're going to have two components we're going to have an empty element, the chat and inputs. Then in here, we're going to have our sign up. And I'm going to put this right over here. And if we go back in here, we're only going to have our sign up. But if our user is going to be set to anything else and reload, we're going to have our chat and inputs. We're going to work on the sign up component later. So we're going to start with the chat. But before we do that, we're going to change a few classes in our main element right here so let's just go ahead and remove all of them and we're going to start by setting the 
height to be screen, max height to be also screen, max width to be screen, the MX to be auto, and then we're going to add a few responsive classes. So we're going to have container on medium, padding of 20 on medium, and then padding top of 4 on medium. Now we're going to go to our chat component, and in here we're going to add a few classes. So in the div, now we're going to have the send, and we can actually get this from at assets. So that's what I'm going to do. And in here, we're going to add an image here. So image, I'm going to fix this. And the source is going to be send. Alt is also going to be sent, so let's just write that in there. And here's going to be our image. You can see it's too large, so let's go ahead and set the height to be 20, the width to be 20, and add a few classes. So I'm just going to go in here, class name, we're going to write width of 6. On medium, we're going to set the width to be 12, and the MX to be auto. So now it should look a lot nicer. There it is. And now if we go to inspect, and go to a mobile phone, we can see that it's going to go full screen, which is where our medium classes came in. So we can see that this would be a large mobile phone. And then once you go to a iPad or anything larger, we can see that it's going to go to this design. Now let's go back to the chat.js and work on the message right here. So we're going to start by having our paragraph and adding a few class names. So we're going to start by actually writing it like this so that we could have different options. So the first class name is going to be PX of six. PY of 1, and we're going to set the display property to be flex. We're going to add the different styles here later on, but since we don't have any actual text or anything like that, then we're just going to keep it like this for now. I might should forget to add the responsive classes, so on mobile phones it's going to be PX1, and then on medium devices and larger it's going to be PX6. Now in here let's add a span with a few other class names, so we're going to do the same thing here. Here we're going to write text to be 3XL, PX to be 6, py to be 1, rounded to Excel, and let's set the background to be sky 400, and text to be white. Make sure you also add a text Excel, and set the text Excel 3 to be on medium devices and larger. And in here we would write the actual text, so in here we're just going to write the content, and let's see what that looks like. So here's going to be our hello world, and let's actually change the py to be 2 in here, so that it looks a bit nicer, so there it is. But now we're going to have to add another value in here, and it's going to be own. So if own is going to be true, then we're going to set this to be blue and on the right side. Else it's going to be on the left, and the background and text is going to be a bit different. So let's start by changing the classes a bit. So in here, let's write own. Then we're going to add these classes. Else it's going to be background slate 300. And that should be it. So currently we can see that this is going to be a text that we're going to be receiving if we change own. So let's write own in here. And we're going to set this to true. So true. Then it's going to be blue. Let's also in here we can write the same thing but just a bit different. So if own then we're just going to write justify end. And we, we can end it right here. So that's right, if it, this is going to be our own text, then we're going to set it to be on the right side, else it's going to be on the left. So copy this, paste it, let's write false, and now this text is going to be on the left. Now let's work on the functionality of our inputs, so that every time we write something, press on enter or press on the button, it's going to add it to the chat, and we're going to be able to actually see all of that. So for that, we're going to create a hook called chat with a set chat, and this is going to be a use state with an array in here. So for the inputs, we're going to pass in set chat, the user, and also the socket so that we're going to be able to actually send messages to the server. Now in our inputs here, I'm going to actually space this out since we have an image here. We're going to go to our input over here and we're going to have a hook inside of here. So let's go ahead and create that. We're going to call this input and then set input. And this is going to be a use state. Make sure that you import that or else you're going to get an error. And here we're going to be setting the value to be input. Then we're going to have an unchange in here where we're going to be getting the event. And we're going to be running a function which is going to be called user typing. Here we're going to be passing in the event. And let's create the function here. So const user typing. We're going to be setting the input to be e.target.value. Later on we're going to be sending a message to the server that the user is typing so that 
other users or clients can see that another user is typing. We're going to use another event listener, which is going to be on key down. And this is going to be when the user presses on enter. So e.key equals to enter. Make sure that the e is capitalized. If it equals to enter, then we're going to send message, which is going to be another function. So let's go ahead and create this function right here. I'm going to put this above the user typing function. And here we're going to be adding the message to our set chat, which we haven't gotten yet. So we started with our set chat, then we have our user, and then we have the socket. And I'm going to change the order. So user socket, and then we're going to have the set chat. When we send the message, let's create a variable first because we're going to be sending or adding this object to multiple places. So I'm just going to call this MSG. First thing we're going to have is the content, which is going to be equal to the input. Then we're going to have the type for when we also have images. In this case, they're all going to be text. And then the user is going to be user. Let's add set chat. And here we're going to be getting the previous chat. And we're going to be adding the message to the previous chat. And to see if that works, we can go to the page and console log if any of that changes. So chat. We can go back in here, input, inspect, and if we write anything in here, press on enter, we can see that we've added this object with our content, type, and user. So if we write anything else, we can see that it's going to get added. So let's also set the input to be blank after we send a message. So we're going to write set input to be blank. And let's also make the button work, which we should have done. So on click, we're going to send a message. So now all of this should work. If we go to the chat, we should be getting the chat in here. So let's go to the page. We're going to go to chat. Let's get the chat. It's a lot of chats, but in here, we're going to map all of them. So we're going to write chat.map. We're going to get the message and then the index. We're going to be returning the message component with the key of index. And we're going to pass in the actual message here. Let's comment this out. And here are going to be both of our messages. So if we write anything, we can see that it's still going to work, but our own is also not going to work. So what we can do is go in here. We're also going to be passing in the user. So user is going to be user.current. If we go to chat and in here, we're going to be checking if the user from here is going to be equal to the user that we're getting. So we're going to be writing message is going to be equal to message with our own checking if the message dot user equals to the actual user. If it is, then it's true. Else it's going to be false. So let's go ahead and see if that works. Now we can see that it changed and it works. Now that we fixed that problem. We can go ahead and try sending this message to the server. So we can go to the input where it says send message. What we're going to do is go in here and write socket.emit. Let's call this send message. And we're going to be sending in the message. So we can go to the server, go to the connection, and write socket.on send message. We're going to be receiving the message. And we can just start by console logging the message and seeing what it looks like. I'm going to show the terminal, go to the server. Let's reload everything and we can write the message here. So we can write hello there. And let's also fix the outline in a second. So let's send in the message. We can see that the content is going to be hello there. Type is going to be text and user is going to be Bobby. To fix the input, we're going to go in here find the input and we're going to add the class in here. We're just going to set this to be the first class. So focus is going to be outline none. Now, if we go back in here, press on it, there's going to be no focus. Now let's go back to our server.js in here and we're going to write socket.broadcast.emit and I'm going to tell you what this does in just a second. And here we're going to call this one receive message and we're going to be sending the message now if we go back to the page.js file we're going to be using useEffect 
down over here. So let's go ahead and write use effect. And in here, we're going to write socket.on receive receive message. And in here, let's console log the message. And before we see if this works, we have to go down here and we have to return a function, which is going to say socket.off receive message. And now if we go back in here, I'm going to open a new tab with another client. And in here, let's inspect, go to the console and I'm going to type something in here. So I'm just going to say hello there. If we go back in here, we're going to get this hello there. It's going to be coming from Bobby and this client is also going to be Bobby because we haven't created our signup page. So when we do receive this message, it's still going to be on the right, but we're going to work on that later on. And so socket.broadcast, what this does is it sends this message to all the users other than the user who sent the message to the server. So if we go back in here, inspect console, we can see that we're not going to get this message because we're going to be using broadcast.emit. We can go back in here, go to the page.js, and we're going to add this message to our chat right here. So let's go ahead and write set chat. We're going to get the previous and we're going to set this to previous and the new message. So if we reload everything, I'm going to close this. If we write hello there, go to our other tab. We're going to see we're going to get this hello there. If I write hi, go to the other tab. We can see that we're also going to get this hi over here. And before we move on, I want to show you a website called Code Crafters that's used to practice writing complex software. And if you've enjoyed writing Socket.io so far, this is the best place to learn more about it. Since you can recreate popular software like Redis, Git, SQLite, and a lot of different ones. And down over here, we can see that it's used by senior engineers working at the world's best companies like Google, Apple, NVIDIA, Adobe, and even Porsche. Over here are going to be all the challenges. Currently, they only have eight, but they're working on adding more challenges and there's going to be a lot of different languages that you can use and they do have at least one free challenge every month currently they have this build your own interpreter which is going to be free during beta so as an example i'm going to choose this build your own http server which is going to be perfect for socket io i'm going to press on start building i'm going to choose javascript i'm going to say that my proficiency is intermediate a few times a week and i'll pass and here you're going to have to set up your repository and the really nice thing about code crafters is that it's going to be listening for all the git pushes so every time you update your code it's going to be listening for it and look for errors and you're going to know once you're actually done with the current challenge so let's say we go to this extract url path i'm going to skip that and here's going to be the challenge that you're going to have to be doing but let's say that you're stuck and you're not really sure what to do you can go to code examples and here's going to be the code example so we can see that i haven't went over any of this in the video so you can learn a lot by trying these challenges and looking at the code examples but in this case you're not going to be using express so you're also going to learn about net and once you're done with one of these challenges you can go back to the catalog choose any of their other challenges like build your own dns server your own shell or any of the other ones and if you're actually interested you can go ahead and click in the link down in the description below try a free challenge and if you're really interested you can go ahead and accept this 40% off your subscription after the free trial. But now let's get back to the video. Now that we have this working, let's go ahead and add images. And after that, we're going to create our basic signup page so that we can see different users, their names, and things like that. So let's go back in here, go to the inputs.js. We're going to create a new input, which is going to be under the button. So inputs, this one is going to be type file. We're going to add a class name of hidden so that we wouldn't see this input because we don't want to see it. And we're going to add an on change here. So on change, we're going to run a callback function with our event. We're going to call this handle image upload. And we're going to pass in the event. We're also going to add a ref in here. So ref, we're going to call this upload input. Let's go up here create this ref so const upload input that's going to be user ref null we have to import this from react let's create the function now so we have send message user typing and let's also create the other one handle image upload we're going to start by creating a variable for the file which is going to be e.targets.files let's actually console log the event first 
and then under that we're going to console log the file so that we can understand how all of this works and this is not going to work because we're not going to see it so we first have to make it so that this button if there's no text and we press on it it's going to press on this input that's why we have the ref over here so if we're going to go to send message we're going to have this message and all that but first we can check if the input has anything in it so in here we're going to create an if statement so if we have input then we're going to run all of this else down here we're going to press on the upload input, so upload input dot click and make sure that you write dot current because else it's not going to work. So upload input dot current dot click. Let's see if all that works. And so when we press on that, we're going to see that the Explorer opens and we can change the SVG here now since we're going to be uploading the files now. So down here we have the source. We can change this a bit. So we're going to write if input then it's going to be send else it's going to be upload and if we go back now we're going to see this upload svg but if we type anything it's going to change to the send and then it's going to send if we have any text in there so now we actually have to get the file in here and let's go ahead and actually do that i'm going to select it outside of my screen here it's going to be an image and if we inspect everything now go to the console we're going to get this file and we're going to get a few things in here. So as modified, the name, we can see that it's going to be this send icon here, but just as a PNG. And the one thing that we're going to be checking here is that if the type of the file doesn't equal to image PNG or JPEG, then we're not going to show this file. So in here we can write if file.type equals to image JPEG or file.type equals to image PNG. Then in here we're gonna then in here we're gonna create a URL for the image. So let's go ahead and create a variable for that. So to do that, we're gonna be using something called URL dot create object URL. And here we're gonna be passing in the file. So if we console log the image now, go back in here. I'm gonna upload the same image. We're gonna see this URL. If we press on it, nothing's gonna work. But if we copy all of the URL, paste it in here. We're going to see the png file and so the way that it's going to work is we're going to be passing in the url and we're going to be uploading an image with the url being the source if you want to see a more detailed video on this let me know down in the description below but let's go back in here and we're gonna write set chat and i forgot to create an object first so let's go ahead and do that so const msg we're going to have the content being the image the type is going to be image and the user is going to be user and set chat we're going to get the previous chat and then we're going to be passing in the previous chat and the new message then we're going to also write socket.emit so that other users are going to get it this is going to be a normal send message and we're going to be passing in the message so now if we go back in here where we're going to be getting all of that we're going to be passing that to the chat and in the chat here, we're going to be logging in the type to see if all of this works. So type. Let's reload everything. I'm going to upload the same image over here. So here we're going to be getting the URL. If we go in here, we're also going to be getting the URL. But if we go to console log, this is going to be an image. So now down in here, where we're going to be passing in the content, we're going to write in here type equals to text. Then... It's going to be our content and down here we're going to create a normal image element with the source being the content alt is going to be image we're going to upload the same exact image and we're going to see it over here and all of these styles are going to be in the globals.css file so if you do want to change them then you can go ahead and do that but if you send a big image like this we can see that it's going to be way too large so to fix that we're going to go to our message right here and add a class of message. So message and now it should be fixed. So there it is. Let's fix the padding X here. So in here where it says PX of six, let's also write it like this so that it's going to be a lot neater. We're going to have another one, which is going to be for type. If that's going to be text, then we're going to have PX of six else it's going to be px of 2 so let's go ahead and fix that 
px of 2. We can move this now. And now it's going to look a bit nicer. And let's also add some border radius to the image. So after the source, I'm going to write class name, rounded, md. And now it's going to look a lot nicer. Now let's work on the sign up page. So go back to your page.js. We're going to start by setting the user to be null. But now if we go back, we're going to see the sign up page. So before we go in there, let's go ahead and create a hook, which is going to be input and then also set input. So you're going to see why we'll need that later on. We're going to scroll down to our sign up and we're going to pass in a few things. So first thing that we're going to need is going to be the user, which is just going to be the user. Then we're going to pass in the socket and then also the input. Let's go to the sign up page, get those things. So we're going to be getting the user, the socket, and I'm going to paste this in here so that we can use this. And then we're going to go back to this hook. We're going to need to import use state from here. And now let's start by adding our classes. So I'm going to space this out. The first few classes are going to be with full. Height is going to be full. Sway property is going to be flex. Flex column. We're going to put our items in the center and then also justify our items in the center. Then we're going to have another div in here with class name of text center. Grid and then grid rows of three. Gap is going to be two. We're going to have the gradient be the background color, padding of eight, and then we're going to set the border radius to be rounded medium. Inside of the div, we're going to create an H1 with the text of chat app. Under that, we're going to have an H2, which is going to say enter your name. Enter your name to join. The H1 is going to have class name of text 6XL. Font is going to be bold. And then the text is going to be white. The H2 is going to be text 2XL. And then text white. And under the text elements, we're going to have an input type of text. And then the class name is going to be text 2XL. Text is going to be center. Border radius is going to be rounded medium. Padding is going to be two. Margin top and bottom is also going to be two. The text is going to be blue 400. Placeholder text color is going to be blue 300. And on focus, we're going to remove the outline. So we're going to write outline none. And let's also add a placeholder. I'm going to just set this to be dot dot dot. And in here, we're going to be setting our input. So first thing is we're going to set the value to be input. On change, we're going to be getting the event and we're going to be setting the input to be event.target.value. Under this, we're going to have on key down event listener, which is going to add the user. So we're going to be getting the event and we're going to check that event.key equals to enter. And if that's true, we're going to be running this callback function called add user. So let's go ahead and create it right here. Const add user. Let's start by setting the input to be blank. And then we're going to do the other stuff once we're done creating the button. So under all of this, we're going to have a button with a class name that's going to be changing. So we're going to write it like this. First class name is going to be width full, padding top and bottom of two, px of three. And we're going to set the text to be white behind these two classes. And we're also going to set the font to be bold. Border radius is going to be rounded medium. And in here, we're going to set the text to be extra large. And the text is going to be join chat. Let's add a background of sky 400. And here's going to be the center page. It's going to be very simple, but also nice. Now we want to disable this button when we don't have any text in here and then also change the color of that. So let's go ahead and remove this. And in here, we're going to start by writing input question mark. We're going to set the background to be sky 400 else. It's going to be background slate 400. Now, if we go back reload, it's not going to work. 
because I forgot to E in here, but now it's going to be slate. Let's go ahead and also disable this. So we can write disabled and it's going to be equal to not input. And now if we don't have anything in here, the button's going to be disabled. If we change the text, then we're going to see that it's going to be enabled now and we can actually press on it. And under here, we're going to write on click. We're going to run add user. And now we can work on the add user function. So over here, let's go ahead and set the user dot current to be the input. And then we're going to write socket dot emit under that. We're going to name this new user. And then we're going to be passing in the input. Let's name this user. So if we write anything in here, press on enter or press on join chat. We can see that all of this is not going to work, which is why we need to use this hook from our page.js. So what's happening is we're creating this hook inside of our signup. And every time we change it, it's going to be re-rendering only the signup component when we need it to also re-render the page.js component, which is where this statement is happening. It's going to be checking if we have a user. So we can go back to the signup, remove this, and we're going to get the input and then the set input. Let's go ahead and move that import. But now let's see if any of this works. So I'm going to create a user here called Bobby. And here we're going to have Bob. Bob is going to write hello. And if we go to Bobby now, we can see that we're going to get our text and it's going to be on the left side and it's going to have a different background color. But if I write something in here now, hey, it's going to be on the right side and then for Bob, it's going to be on the left side, but the main problem is if we had another Bobby and we wrote something, it's going to be on the right side for both of them because it's only going to be checking for the name of the users, which is why we're going to need to use IDs. To fix that, all that we have to do is go to the signup.js and in here we're going to be setting the name of the user to be input and the ID is going to be the socket connection.id. So now if we go to the chat.js file, where it says message.user equal to user, we're going to be getting the message.user.id and then user.id. And if that's right, this should work now. So let's have Bobby. And then here we're going to have another Bobby. Bobby is going to say hello. Now we can see that it's going to be on the left side for this Bobby. Now, if this Bobby says hello, it's going to be on the, on the right side for this Bobby and then on the left side for this Bobby. Now let's go to the server.js and actually get the new user. So we're going to go down in here, write socket.on, new user. We're going to be getting in the data. We're going to console log the data just to see what we're going to get. Let's reload. The name is going to be Josh or whatever you want. Now if we go back in here, we're going to get user to be Josh. So we're going to pass in data.user. We're going to write socket.broadcast dot emit and let's also call this new user and we're going to be passing in data dot user which is just going to send in a string of josh so page.js socket dot on new user and then here we're going to be getting the new user and let's console log just to see if this works too so we're going to get bob here we're going to get josh I misspelled Josh, but if we go in here, we're going to get Josh and we're going to be getting six console logs. So to fix that, we're going to go to the return here, write socket dot off your user. Let's try this again. So here we're going to have Bobby here. We're going to have Josh. I misspelled Josh again, but now we're only going to get one console log. So now it works. Now we can go back in here and add a new chat. So we're going to write set chat. We're going to get the previous chats. We're going to set it to be previous chat and we're going to create a new chat. We're going to start by setting the content to be the new user joined the type. Instead of setting this to be text or image, we can set this to be server because it's going to be a server message and it's going to be a bit different and we're not going to pass in the user because we're not going to need it. So now let's go to the chat and here let's write a ternary operator, which is going to also make sure that you add a class of medium px of six to the paragraph. And for the span, make sure that you add a text Excel and text Excel of three on medium devices and larger. We're gonna look for user typing. We're gonna get the data 
and then in here let's console log it to make sure that all of this works so this is going to be bobby and when bobby starts typing we're going to get a user with the name of bobby and the id of bobby and then we're also going to get typing false true true so currently it's going to be true but if we move everything in here it should be set to false but we can see that it's not so to fix that we're going to set this to be the event.target.value if we start typing again it's going to be true and if we stop it's going to go back to false and we don't actually need the id instead of the user so we can set user to be equal to user.name and let's see again so user is going to be bobby typing is going to be true and if we remove everything user is still going to be bobby and typing is going to go to false so now in here we can emit a message so socket.broadcast.emit this is going to be user typing also and then we're going to be passing in the data now we can go to the page.js file we're going to go under receive message and we're going to write socket.on user typing we're going to get the data and in here the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our user exists so if no user.current we're going to return now let's go to this return and write socket.off and then user typing. We're going to create a hook for this. So we're going to go in here, const, I'm just going to call this typing. So in here we're going to write set typing. And the use state is going to be an array. You can also rename this to users typing because it's going to be an array of users. But in here, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set typing to be the data. But first, we have to get the previous values so that we can do a few things. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to check if this user that we're getting from the server already exists in this typing array. So if typing dot includes data dot user, then we're going to return. But now the problem is even if the value set to false and we want to remove him, this is not going to work. So we also have to write and data dot typing equals to true so that we know for sure that if this user exists and typing is equal to true we're going to return previous down here we're going to check if the typing equals to false so that we can remove the user from this array so here we're going to return previous dot filter and here we're going to be getting the user so let's just write you u doesn't equal to data.user and I'm not going to be using user in here because we have a user over here and so let's just write u in there else in here we're just going to return the previous value plus the new users so what's happening here is in this section of the if statement we're checking if this user that's typing is in the array and if he is then we're going to be checking if he's currently typing because we don't actually need him in this array because we already have him but then if it's false then we're going to be removing him from the array but then if this user is not in this array he's going to have a typing of true which means that we're just going to remove the previous values plus the new user so hopefully that makes sense let's go and check and see if all this works so we're going to have bobby in here and here we're going to have josh if josh starts typing we're going to get josh in here but then if he stops typing It's still not going to change, so I'm pretty sure this has to be outside. So let's go ahead and try this again. If Josh starts typing, we're going to see Josh, but then if he stops typing, we can see that's going to go back to nothing. Same goes in here if Bobby starts typing and we go here, we're going to have an array of Bobby. But then if Bobby stops typing, it's going to be empty. So now let's go ahead and remove this console log. And in the chat right here, we're going to pass in typing, which is going to be typing. So in here, we're going to get typing and under the map for all of our chats, we're going to check if typing exists. And if it does, then we're going to pass in a new component. Let's call this typing. And here we're going to pass in the user, which is going to be typing. So now if we go down in here, we're going to create a new component called typing. And here we're going to get the user. And I did make a small mistake there. So if we go up in here, it's going to be the first value in the array. If we go back in here, let's return a paragraph for now. That's going to say the name of the user is typing just to make sure that this works. So 
if this guy's going to start typing, Josh is typing. But then now if he stops typing, we can see that it's going to disappear. Same goes for Bobby. Bobby's typing. But now if he stopped typing, we can see that it goes away. Now let's go ahead and actually add this animation here. So, so we're going to start by creating a div this time with a class name of px6, py of 1. And the display property is going to be flex. Inside of here, we're going to have another div with a class of loader. The background is going to be slate 300. And then we're going to set the border radius to be rounded to Excel. And then the padding is going to be 5. And here we're going to have three divs, which is going to be for each dot. And now if we go back in here and this guy starts typing, we're going to see this nice animation. Now to actually add the icon or logo or whatever you would want to call it for the user that's typing, we're going to go in here. And for this, we're going to create a span with a class name of background blue, 600. Text is going to be white. And you can actually change the background to be whatever you want. We're going to set the border radius to be rounded full. The text is going to be in the center. Padding X is going to be 4. Margin right is going to be 2. The display property is going to be flex. And then items are going to be in the center. So let's go in here and set the text to be 2XL. Because in here, we're going to be passing in the user. But we only want the first letter. So we're going to write user.char at. It's going to be zero and we're going to write to uppercase so that it would be uppercase. So to uppercase, there it is. And now if we have a in here and then this guy starts typing, we're going to get an error and we're getting an error because we're checking if, because we're only passing in typing as an array and we should be passing this as a, as a string. So we're going to get the first user and let's try this again so we're gonna have bobby in here if bobby's gonna start typing now i did make a small mistake this has to be char at or sorry char at and then here we're passing in the whole array so we have to pass in the first string in the array and then let's also change the styles a little bit so we're gonna set the my to be auto and then we're also gonna set py to be two so now let's take a look and see if any of this works. So we're going to have Bobby in here, Josh in here. If Bobby starts typing, we're going to see this nice little logo and then the nice animation. If we stop typing, it's going to disappear, but we're going to have a small problem. If Bobby types Bobby, we can see that we're not going to have this logo with the actual text. And it's still going to say that he's typing because we haven't really wrote anything that would say set the typing to be false whenever the user sends the actual message so we have to fix those two things let's start with the inputs here so whenever the user sends a message we're going to also omit user typing and we're going to set that user to be false so user is going to be user.name and we're going to set typing to be false just like that now if we try this again i'm just going to set this guy to be a this guy's going to be B. If A types, we're going to see that. But then if he sends the message, we're going to see the message and he's not going to be typing anymore. And now let's actually add this logo beside the text. So to do that, we're going to go back to the chat. We're going to go to the message right here. And we're pretty much going to copy and paste this up in here. But we also have to get the user in our message. So let's go up in here. And we should already be getting the user but let's also console log because I want to make sure if we're passing the whole user with the ID or just the name. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to be writing something in here and then let's see what kind of user we get. So we are going to get an object with an ID and a name. So that's why I wanted to make sure. So it's going to be user.name. Above the span in here, we're going to make sure that it's not going to be the own user's text. So if it's not, then we're going to add this nice logo. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see how that looks. And we're probably going to have to change a few styles. So let's take a look. We're going to have Bobby in here, Josh in here. And then if Josh sends a message, we can see we're going to get this error. And that's because this has to be user.name. We can also remove this console log from here. Bobby is going to send a message to Josh. 
we're going to see this nice little logo and everything is going to work pretty well. So we can say, hey, we're going to get a hey. Another thing that's left to do is whenever we send an image, we're going to want to fix this a little bit. So we're going to copy this and here we're going to paste all this. We're going to remove the MY of auto. And then here we're going to check if the type of the text is going to be image. So we're going to write type is going to be text. But then we're going to add these styles. Else we're going to set the max height to be 12. And we're not going to have the MY of auto. So let's see if this fixed it. We can see that it did. It looks a lot nicer now. And if we send a larger image, so let's just say this time Bobby sent a different image. So something like this. We're going to see his logo at the very top. And now that small issue is going to be fixed. Now we're also going to add an automatic scroller so that whenever we receive a new text, it's going to scroll down for us. So to do that, we're going to go to our chat, which we were already inside. So under all of this, we're going to create a self-closing div, just like this, which is going to have a use ref. So before we add the ref or create it, let's add a few classes. We're going to set padding bottom to be two so that this right here wouldn't be the padding because we can see that it's a bit different at the top and the bottom. So padding bottom is going to be two. On medium, we're going to change the padding bottom to be six. So now this should be fixed. So we can see that there's going to be the same padding, but now let's you add the ref. So ref, we're going to call this scroller. We're going to go up in here. Let's import use ref from react, create the variable. We're going to call this guy scroller use ref. And this is going to be set to null. Now we're going to use use effect. So use effect. Let's import that too. In the callback function here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to first check if we have this scroller element, because if we don't, then we're just going to return because we don't want any errors. And then after this, we're going to get the scroller and we're going to get the current. We're going to use a method called scroll into view, just like this. And here we're going to set the behavior to be smooth. The block is going to be end. And inline is going to be nearest. And we have to set this use effect to only work on chat so that whenever we create a new chat, it's going to be seeing if we need to scroll. So now we can see that it's going to automatically scroll. So if we set another chat, it's going to also scroll for us. And if we go in here, we can see that it's going to scroll for us too. So if you're up here looking at old text and then this guy sent a message, hello, it's going to scroll to the very bottom so that the other guy knows that this guy sent a message. And another thing that you could also do is have different colors. So for every guy that joins, you're going to create a random color for him so that if there's two bobs, then you're going to see that one bob is going to be blue, the other one's going to be green. Or you can write the first letter and the last letter. Before I end this video, I want to go ahead and add a class that I forgot to add. So we can see that the width here is not going to be the same because the letters are a bit different. So for that, I made a class called logo, which I forgot to add. So we're going to add it to our message here and then also to the typing. So copy and paste it here. And now this should be fixed. So there it is. This is where I'm going to end this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, then make sure to leave a like, subscribe so don't miss upcoming lessons like this. Comment down below if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more content like this and hopefully see you in the next video.